This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. All right, so we have the conclusion of the Parler versus Amazon Web Services motion for a temporary restraining order. It got converted into a motion for a preliminary injunction just because of the way procedure works. The temporary restraining order and preliminary injunction are, are very, very similar to one another. Well, the judge for the Western District of Washington in Parler versus Amazon Web Services has denied Parler's motion for such a preliminary injunction. This matter comes before the court on a motion for a temporary restraining order filed by Parler seeking to have the court order defendant Amazon Web Services reinstate AWS's web hosting services that AWS provided Parler under the party's customer services agreement. Parler initially filed the motion as one requesting a TRO, but after the court ordered Parler to serve AWS with notice, ordered additional briefing and held a hearing, the parties agree that the motion has been converted to one for a preliminary injunction. In its complaint, Parler asserts three claims. One, for conspiracy in restraint of trade in violation of the Sherman Act, 15 U.S.C. Section 1. Two, for breach of contract. And three, for tortious interference with business expectancy. AWS disputes all three claims, asserting that it is Parler, not AWS, that has violated the terms of the party's agreement, and in particular, AWS's acceptable use policy, which prohibits the illegal, harmful, or offensive use of AWS services. It is important to note what this case is not about. Parler is not asserting a violation of any First Amendment rights, which exist only against a government entity and not against a private company like AWS. And indeed, Parler has not disputed that at least some of the abusive and violent posts that gave rise to the issues in this case violate AWS's acceptable use policy. This motion does not ask the court to make a final ruling on the merits of Parler's claims. As a motion for a preliminary injunction before any discovery has been conducted, Parler seeks only to have the court determine the likelihood that Parler will ultimately prevail on its claims and to order AWS to restore service to Parler pending a full and fair litigation of the issues raised in the complaint. Having reviewed the briefs filed in support of and opposition to the motion and having heard oral argument by video conference, the court finds and rules as follows. Parler was founded in 2018 and describes itself as a conservative microblogging alternative and competitor to Twitter. Parler, like Twitter, Facebook, and other social media entities referenced in this action, is an online platform that allows third-party users, sometimes anonymously, to express thoughts and ideas for other users to read and comment on. Parler takes a laissez-faire attitude or reflective approach to moderation of its users' speech. Parler says, quote, we prefer that removing community members or member provided content be kept to the absolute minimum. At the time of the filing of its complaint, Parler claims to have had 15 million end user accounts and a million downloads of its app per day. AWS is a Amazon company which offers computing services for business, nonprofits, and government organizations globally. According to Parler, AWS is the world's leading cloud service provider, capturing a third of the global market. In June 2018, Parler entered into a customer services agreement with AWS, the CSA or the agreement, for the latter to provide the cloud computing services Parler needs for its apps and website to function on the internet. In recent months, Parler's popularity has grown rapidly, and around the time of the 2020 presidential election, according to Parler, millions of users were abandoning Twitter and migrating to the Parler platform. During the same time period, AWS claims that it received reports that Parler was failing to moderate posts that encouraged and incited violence in violation of the terms of the CSA and the Acceptable Use Policy, the AUP. The AUP proscribes, among other things, quote, illegal, harmful, or offensive use or content defined as content that is defamatory, obscene, abusive, invasive of privacy, or otherwise objectionable. AWS claims that in recent weeks it repeatedly communicated with Parler its concerns about third-party content that violated the terms of the CSA and AUP, and that Parler failed to respond to those concerns in a timely or adequate manner. 
AWS has submitted to the court multiple representative examples reflecting content posted on Parler during this period that AWS claims violated the terms of the AUP and the party's agreement. The court will not dignify or amplify these posts by quoting them here. You can see them in our previous post. Um, even I wouldn't read them because they were they were quite bad, is, is how I will characterize them. If you need to see them for yourself, you can go read the Amazon response to the Parler TRO request where it lists those uh, inflammatory and offensive statements. Parler has not denied that these posts are abusive or that they violate the Amazon acceptable use policy. Parler does claim, however, that AWS knew Parler was attempting to address content moderation challenges and that AWS appeared to be willing to cooperate in Parler's efforts. Parler asserted AWS's actions and communications led Parler's corporate officers to believe that far from being concerned about remaining in a contractual relationship with Parler, AWS wished to expand that contractual relationship. On January 6, 2021, supporters of President Donald Trump seeking to overturn the results of the presidential election marched on Congress, resulting in a violent and deadly riot at the U.S. Capitol. On January 8th, Twitter and Facebook banned President Trump from their platforms. Parler claims that in response to speculation that the president would move to Parler, there was a mass exodus of users from Twitter to Parler and a 355% increase in installations of Parler's app. Parler also claims that the surge during this time was responsible for its failure to deal with a backlog of some 26,000 posts that it acknowledges potentially encouraged violence in violation of the AUP. On January 9, 2021, AWS notified Parler that it intended to suspend all services as of 11.59 p.m. Sunday, January 10th. Quote, it's clear that Parler does not have an effective process to comply with the AWS terms of service. Given the unfortunate events that transpired this week in Washington, D.C., there is serious risk that this type of content will further incite violence because Parler cannot comply with our terms of service and poses a very real risk to public safety. We plan to suspend Parler's account effective Sunday, January 10th, 1159 p.m. PST. At some time during the night between January 10th and 11th, AWS suspended its services and Parler went dark. On the morning of January 11th, Parler filed its complaint and the instant motion seeking ex parte, without the opposing party, a TRO from this court prohibiting AWS from suspending services. Parler failed, however, to provide the certification required under the federal rules of civil procedure, verifying that its counsel made an effort to serve AWS notice of the motion or in the alternative why notice should not be required. The court therefore ordered Parler to provide notice of its motion to AWS. Further, the court set a briefing schedule. As directed, AWS filed its opposition on January 12th, and Parler filed a reply on January 13th. On the 14th, the court held a hearing on the motion by video conference. The court and the parties agree that the motion for a temporary restraining order is now essentially one for preliminary injunction and is ripe for this court's consideration. As courts have repeatedly emphasized, an injunction represents an extraordinary remedy that is never awarded as a matter of right. See Winter v. Natural Resources Defense Council, a 2008 Supreme Court case. For a preliminary injunction to issue, the moving party has the burden of demonstrating all four of the following elements. One, that it is likely to succeed on the merits. Two, that it is likely to suffer irreparable harm in the absence of preliminary relief. Three, that the balance of equities tips in its favor. And four, that an injunction serves the public interest. In the wake of winter, in which the Supreme Court narrowed the path to an injunction, the Ninth Circuit has maintained that a preliminary injunction may also be appropriate if a movement raises serious questions going to the merits and the balance of hardships tips sharply towards it, as long as the second and third winter factors are also satisfied. Further, in the Ninth Circuit, the elements of the preliminary injunction test are balanced so that a stronger showing of one element may offset a weaker showing of another. On the likelihood of success on the merits, the court reviews the three distinct claims in turn. On the Sherman Act claim, Parler alleges that AWS's termination of services is, quote, apparently designed to reduce competition in the microblogging services market to the benefit of Twitter and therefore violates Section 1 of the Sherman Antitrust Act. 
That section prohibits every contract, combination in the form of trust or otherwise, or conspiracy in restraint of trade or commerce. To prove a violation of section one, Parler must show one, the existence of an agreement, and two, that the agreement was in unreasonable restraint of trade. At this stage of the proceedings, Parler has failed to demonstrate that it is likely to succeed on the merits of its Sherman Act claim. While Parler has not yet had an opportunity to conduct discovery, the evidence it has submitted in support of the claim is both dwindlingly slight and disputed by AWS. Importantly, Parler has submitted no evidence that AWS and Twitter acted together intentionally, or even at all, in restraint of trade. An allegation of parallel conduct and a bare assertion of conspiracy will not suffice. In contrast, AWS has submitted a sworn declaration of an AWS executive explicitly denying the existence of any such agreement. Quote, to my knowledge, AWS and Twitter have never discussed, much less agreed upon, any policy, practice, or act directed at Parler. To the contrary, we have an internal policy never to discuss matters involving one customer with another customer. Nobody in my organization would be authorized to discuss Parler with Twitter without my authorization, knowledge, or involvement. I have not authorized any AWS employee to discuss Parler with Twitter, and I have not been involved personally in any such discussion. Indeed, Parler has failed to do more than raise the specter of preferential treatment of Twitter by AWS. The sum of its allegation is that by pulling the plug on Parler but leaving Twitter alone despite identical conduct by users on both sides, AWS reveals that its expressed reasons for suspending Parler's account are but pretext. But Parler and Twitter are not similarly situated because AWS does not provide online hosting services to Twitter. Parler's unsupported allegation that AWS provides online hosting services to both Parler and Twitter is explicitly denied in a sworn declaration by the AWS executive. Quote, Twitter's principal social media service, the Twitter feed, does not run on AWS. On December 15, 2020, AWS announced that it signed an agreement with Twitter for AWS to begin servicing the Twitter feed for the first time, but we do not yet service the Twitter feed, and I am not aware of any particular timeline for doing so. Thus, as AWS asserts, it could not have suspended access to Twitter's content because it does not host Twitter. Because the Twitter feed does not run on AWS, the Twitter feed and any tweets on the Twitter feed are not subject to and thus cannot violate Amazon's acceptable use policy. In short, Parler has proffered only faint and factually inaccurate speculation in support of a Sherman Act violation. AWS, in contrast, has submitted sworn testimony disputing Parler's allegations. Parler, therefore, has failed to demonstrate at this stage a likelihood of success on its Sherman Act claim. On the breach of contract claim, the gravamen of Parler's breach of contract claim is that AWS terminated the agreement without providing Parler 30 days to cure any alleged material breach. AWS denies that it terminated Parler's account, claiming that it merely suspended its services. As discussed below, this distinction is not material to Parler's claim at this stage. However, as the CSA grants AWS the authority to take either action under the same circumstances. Parler claims it is entitled to the 30-day cure period based on a provision in the CSA that provides either party may terminate this agreement for cause if the other party is in material breach of this agreement and the material breach remains uncured for a period of 30 days from receipt of notice by the other party. As noted above, Parler alleges that AWS notified Parler that the latter was in material breach for the first time only hours before suspending or terminating services. AWS responds that it is Parler, not AWS, that has breached the agreement. In particular, AWS claims that Parler breached section 4.2 of the CSA, which requires Parler to ensure that Parler's content and end users' use of the content will not violate any of the policies, including AWS's acceptable use policy. That acceptable use policy, as noted above, proscribes activities that are illegal, that violate the rights of others, or that may be harmful to others our operations or reputation, and content that is defamatory, obscene, abusive, invasive of privacy, or otherwise objectionable. 
AWS cites multiple examples of content posted on Parler's site that undeniably meet this definition. So undeniably, the court wouldn't even repost those accusations, uh, and I wouldn't read them out loud. Parler has not denied that content posted on its platform violated the terms of the CSA and the AUP. It claims only that AWS failed to provide notice to Parler that Parler was in breach and give them 30 days to cure, as Parler claims is required by the CSA. However, Parler fails to acknowledge, let alone dispute, that Section 7.2b2, the provision immediately following, authorizes AWS to terminate the agreement immediately upon notice and without providing any opportunity to cure if AWS has the right to suspend under Section 6. And Section 6 provides in turn that AWS may suspend Parler's or its end users' right to access or use any portion or all of the service offerings immediately upon notice for a number of reasons, including if AWS determines that Parler is in breach of this agreement. In short, the CSA gives AWS the right either to suspend or to terminate immediately upon notice in the event Parler is in breach. Parler has not denied that at the time AWS invoked its termination or suspension rights under those sections 4, 6, and 7, Parler was in violation of the agreement and the AUP. It therefore has failed at this stage of the proceedings to demonstrate a likelihood of success on its breach of contract claim. Intentional interference with business expectancy. Under Washington state law, in order to establish a tortious interference claim, Parler must prove the existence of a valid contract relationship, that defendants had knowledge of that relationship, the intentional interference inducing or causing a breach or termination of the relationship, that defendants interfered for an improper purpose or used improper means, and resulting damage. Exercising in good faith one's legal interests is not improper interference. Parler has failed to allege basic facts that would support several elements of this claim. Most fatally, as discussed above, it has failed to raise more than the scantest speculation that AWS's actions were taken for an improper purpose or by improper means. Conversely, AWS has denied it acted improperly, justifying its actions as a lawful exercise of rights it had pursuant to either the suspension or the termination provisions of the CSA. Further, for the reasons outlined above, Parler has failed to demonstrate the likelihood that AWS breached the contract. To the contrary, the evidence at this point suggests that AWS's termination of the CSA was in response to Parler's material breach. Parler has therefore not demonstrated a likelihood of success on this claim. Because likelihood of success is a threshold inquiry, when a plaintiff has failed to show the likelihood of success on the merits, the court need not consider the remaining three winter elements. Given the gravity of the issues presented, the court nevertheless will do so. As noted above, a plaintiff seeking a preliminary injunction must establish that there is a likelihood of suffering irreparable harm in the absence of preliminary relief. Importantly, a showing of a mere possibility of harm is not enough. Irreparable injury is traditionally defined as harm for which there is no other adequate legal remedy such as an award of monetary damages. In support of its claim to irreparable injury, Parler alleges that AWS's suspension or termination renders Parler unable to deliver the services it promises its users and entirely unable to function online. Furthermore, Parler claims the actions are a direct blow to its mission and reputation and has caused a loss of user loyalty, advertising revenue, and the ability to raise capital. In short, Parler alleges these actions have threatened it with extinction. The injuries Parler alleges in its complaint and its motion may be irreparable. The threat of being driven out of business is sufficient to establish irreparable harm. But in winter, the Supreme Court explicitly rejected the possibility of irreparable harm as too lenient to support a preliminary injunction. And in the hearing the court held on this motion, AWS vigorously disputed that Parler has shown that its extinction is likely in the absence of an injunction. The court makes no finding on this issue, but notes that Parler's claims to irreparable harm are substantially diminished by its admission that much of the harm would be compensable by damages. Parler's showing of a likelihood of irreparable injury, particularly in light of its failure to demonstrate a likelihood of success on the merits, is insufficient to support a preliminary injunction. Serious questions going to the merits and balance of hardships.
In the Ninth Circuit, a plaintiff may alternatively be awarded an injunction where it has raised serious questions going to the merits of its claims and the balance of hardships as between the two parties tips sharply in its favor. This analysis does not, however, aid Parler's cause. First, as discussed above, the likelihood of Parler prevailing on its claims is not a close call. Parler's allegations at this time are both inaccurate and unsupported, and are disputed by evidence submitted by AWS. Thus, its motion does not, on this record, raise serious questions going to the merits of its claims. Second, while the balance of hardships may fall heaviest on Parler in the form of potential monetary loss, AWS has convincingly argued that forcing it to host Parler's users' violent content would interfere with AWS's ability to prevent its services from being used to promote, and as the events of January 6, 2021 have demonstrated, even cause violence. It cannot be said, therefore, that the balance of hardships tips sharply in Parler's favor. The balance of equities, fairness, and the public interest. In exercising their sound discretion, courts of equity should pay particular regard for the public consequences in empowering the extraordinary remedy of injunction. Parler argues that the public interest favors the consistent enforcement of contractual obligations and lies in fair and robust market competition. But Parler has not, at this stage, demonstrated a likelihood that it will prevail on its breach of contract, Sherman Act, or tortious interference claims. It therefore necessarily follows that the claims do not support a finding that the public interest weighs in favor of granting the injunction. On the other hand, AWS argues that an injunction forcing it to continue hosting the Parler platform would pose a risk to public safety. Parler attempts to discount this interest by claiming that at the time AWS cut off its services, Parler was already taking steps to develop a more effective content moderation system. But there is no debate, however, that forcing AWS to reinstate its services now before such system can be implemented would result in the continued posting of the kind of abusive violent content that caused caused AWS to shut Parler down in the first place. The court explicitly rejects any suggestion that the balance of equities or the public interest favors obligating AWS to host the kind of abusive violent content at issue in this case, particularly in light of the recent riots at the U.S. Capitol. That event was a tragic reminder that inflammatory rhetoric can, more swiftly and easily than many of us would have hoped, turn a lawful protest into a violent insurrection. The court rejects any suggestion that the public interest favors requiring AWS to host the incendiary speech that the record shows some of Parler's users have engaged in. At this stage, on the showing made thus far, neither the public interest nor the balance of equities favors granting an injunction in this case. Parler has failed to meet the standard set forth by the Ninth Circuit and the Supreme Court precedent for issuance of a preliminary injunction. To be clear, the court is not dismissing Parler's substantive underlying claims at this time. Parler has fallen far short, however, of demonstrating as it must that it has raised serious questions going to the merits of its claims or that the balance of hardships tips sharply in its favor. It has also failed to demonstrate that it is likely to prevail on the merits of any of its three claims, that the balance of equities tips in its favor, let alone strongly so, or that the public interests lie in granting the injunction. For these and the remaining reasons articulated above, Parler's motion for a preliminary injunction is denied, and that's Barbara Jacobs Rothstein, United States District Judge for the Western District of Washington at Seattle. And so that's remarkable. The judge has spoken about the insurrection. The, the Capitol riots are an insurrection to the judge. And she says that the inflammatory rhetoric that she saw on, on Parler's website presented by Amazon in their, in their reply or in their response, that that is something that could be a level of offensive and violent conduct that violates Amazon's acceptable use policy and therefore violates the contract and therefore allows Parler to be suspended or terminated without further 30 days without 30 days to cure after notice of those of those problems. Amazon says that Parler is basically welcome back as soon as they implement a moderation policy that will mitigate the violations of the acceptable use policy. Amazon said that Parler is only suspended until such time as they can implement that system to moderate the, the content. But 
Parler has not implemented such a system, at least not in time for, for Amazon's suspension. So that's why Parler was suspended. Is it unfair that Parler was removed, but Twitter is still up? I mean, sure, an argument could be made, but I mean, I've also been subject to the moderation on Twitter. Uh, I didn't even post violent content. I posted a, a picture of a person pointing a gun at another person. It was part of a meme, and Twitter said that that was, that was too much, and I had to click a button to remove. I don't think I did anything wrong. I think it's unfair that that got removed. I thought it was a meaningful and funny and, and satiristic meme, but Twitter did not. But that's not a violation of my rights. Twitter is allowed to make those adjudications for itself because they are a private company. Amazon, same thing. They can decide what is content that crosses its lines. And it seemed to be pretty clear from those examples that Amazon gave, there was violent and inflammatory and offensive content, not just a little bit, but there was very, it was not only a little bit of content, it was a lot of content and it was very offensive. So uh, Amazon gets to make those choices about what they will host on their platform. Parler, for their part, has found a new hosting service and is in the process of moving everything over. Um, Parler's CEO had said it would take 12 hours, then he said it would take a week. I think it's still been more than a week now and they're still not up. Let me take a quick look here. Parler is still not up, it appears. Now it seems like the right time to remind you all why we started this platform. We believe piracy, we believe piracy. We believe privacy is paramount and free speech essential on social media. Our aim has always been to provide a nonpartisan public square. I think they described themselves as a conservative space, so I don't know why that's nonpartisan, but okay. Where individuals can enjoy and exercise their rights to both free speech and privacy. We will resolve any challenge before us and welcome you all back soon. And uh, it looks like they have some things to say then in, in, in the middle here. You, can, you guys can go to parlor.com and read that for yourself because at least that part is back up, but the interactive services part, um, you know, how you guys know the service as a, as a sort of Reddit-like forum, uh, that is not apparently back up yet. So that's only a denial of the motion for a preliminary injunction. We still have further litigation or adjudication of the case to go. What could happen next? Amazon could file a motion to dismiss based on there not being a contract violation, and then the judge would have to infer all unresolved evidentiary matters in Parler's favor and decide whether there is actually a claim that needs to be adjudicated. If the judge does not grant the motion to dismiss, then the case would go forward into discovery and Parler would get to ask for the discovery of relevant evidence and information from Amazon. And Amazon would get to do the same back to Parler, testimony and evidence that is relevant to the claims and defenses in the case. And then I suspect that either the case will get dropped by, by the losing party or the case will be decided on summary judgment if, if, if it's clear enough that there's no mater issues of material fact to take to a jury or judge in a bench trial. If there are still issues of material fact that need to be found by a judge in a bench trial or a jury, then I suspect we're going to some kind of adjudication before the judge or a, uh, or a jury. I don't think it will get that far. I, I, I personally, professionally think that the claims Parler is making are weak enough that they'll be decided on a motion to dismiss, but that's up to Amazon, whether they file a motion to dismiss or not, or try to get rid of the case on a motion for summary judgment. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna bet that it's a motion to dismiss at this time, and we'll wait to see if, if Amazon files that, and we'll cover it then. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Again, I will heavily moderate any inappropriate content. I am the final adjudicator and I, well, I guess YouTube is also an adjudicator, but I am also a final adjudicator of any inappropriate content. So 
if you would please be kind and compassionate to one another, making only founded legal arguments. Unfounded arguments, I probably will not uh, moderate, but I might respond to asking you to, to provide some sort of evidence. Um, and anything that's inflammatory, violent, etc., I will definitely remove. If not, YouTube might remove and, and maybe even do more. So be careful there. Let's keep it civil in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is Lawful Masses, your favorite legal news and education program here on YouTube, also on Floatplane, and on twitch.tv slash lawfulmasses on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern. Our channel is community supported by your monthly financial contributions on patreon.com slash ljfrench, sponsors.com slash law, through YouTube membership, and through Floatplane subscriptions. Thank Thank you to the following $50 plus supporters in the month of January. Joe Tyson, Mitchell Roten, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Spirit Bear, Andy, Benjamin Heitoff, Goliath Cleric, Ugly Grill, Shiloh T, Rudolph Besherer Jr., Oscar the Prophet, Hot Grills in Your Area, Torpedon, Brandon Abel, Cassandra Curran, Sovereign Titizen, Shadow Tycho, RDH Dragon, Earthbound Star, Nathan McCarty, and Awful Asses with Lemon Fresh. And thank you as well to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on your screen. I hope everyone has a great week. I will see you in the videos that drop. I love you all. Bye. to our continued survival. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the injuries parlor alleges in its complaint and its motion might, may, yeah, I tried to say may and might at the same time. <laughs>